Let's open our Bibles tonight in Isaiah. Amen. Years ago, <coughs> years ago, I had uh, Brother Green. I had the privilege of having all of his children, and, uh, a lot of his grandchildren, daughter-in-laws, and all of them come to our church. We had Green Week, and uh, it got green around that little bit. Some of them got green around the jewels down there. Got green there. My man said to me the other day, he said, you know, he said, God touched me that week. God touched me. He said, I've never been the same. He said, my home has never been the same since that week we had here. And I talked to that young man just the other day. He's working in the prison work now. And he got into church that very week. He saw the news for his family. And like Brother Green said, it's a terrible thing to lose one of your children. And Isaiah uh, 66. And Isaiah 66. We was in a cafe one day, Brother Green remembered this. And he and I was uh, sitting out eating dinner, and about 10 or 15 preachers were there with us. Brother John Mitchell, and I don't know who all, Brother, the little fat guy, Jim White. Uh, <clears throat> we was all sitting out eating, and uh, two or three of his boys were there, and uh, he got the shouting in the cafe, like a crying, and I. Asked him if he wouldn't mind letting me in on it. I'd like to shout myself. Occasionally. Yeah. And he said, I just wanted to say, I'm glad that these men at this table are my boys. This is my strike. And this is my time. I'm glad many years ago I found my strike. I want to say this tonight. I, I guess Brother Green says his boy John and I are like. John, he hates the modernists and, and tells, calls them all by their first name, and I, I do the same thing. I'd, I'd rather be a whoremonger and a drunk than I would a modernist. A whoremonger drunk might get saved, but the other, he, he hopeless. A modernist is a terrible thing. Here lately, I've been calling them by their name. Been real ugly with them. <laughs> the last 30 days, it's been awful. <laughs> I don't believe, I just, but I just as soon run around with a man who denies the Bible than a man that's a moral apostate. And we've got a lot of moral apostates. And I'm fellowship just as good myself, which I have no fellowship at all, with a theological apostate. And if you're a moral apostate and you have no conviction, I don't want nothing to do with you. And don't even speak to my children. That's the way I feel about it. I feel that way. Some of these old men, they go around and they say, well, they just go too far. You're a compromiser. You got lace on your drawers and you're scared. You're scared you're going to run somebody off that church. I do my best. I do my best. Man called me the other day and I, I run him off. Lady came up to me, called me Sunday night. She said, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. She said, A woman has no, you said, well, a woman had no business in a man's house. Was you talking to me? I said, What? Well, what are you doing in somebody's house? You're a married woman. Well, she said, this man is a single man, and I clean his house. I said, not while he's there, do you? He's 38 years old, unmarried man, businessman in our city, got saved a year ago. I said, you don't go there when he's there, do you? What does the neighbor say? You said, I just said, I said, what does the neighbor say? And you better be wondering what I'm thinking, because i tell you what I'm thinking. I think you eat marvelous. When I catch a man at a woman's house, I got doubts about his morality. Uh -huh. yeah, you said you're just an old, dirty old man. No, you're just a wicked old Christian. Uh -huh. <laughs> you said that, that, Brother Woods, that was just your, 
Brother Green, uh, down in Houston, I, I don't know if they do it anywhere else, but people just, uh, you know, in the church members, you know, uh, they go over to the people's house and visit. Boys go visit the girls, you know. Ain't nobody, they live in their own apartment. And yeah. you're a wicked snake. Amen. You ain't got no Amen. business in a woman's house Amen. that you ain't married to. You hear what I say? Amen. You thought, you said, is this, in, this is in the sermon. Yeah. <laughs> we just keep bringing down the standard. We said, well, God don't have any standard. You must not ever read the Bible. Yeah. Well, you said, Brother Wood, that's not for our dispensation. I hate that word and everybody uses it. <laughs> you ain't going to take my Bible away from me. That's right. I like that word. And I found out something about God. Jesus must not like it either. A woman sitting there and Jesus said, I, I can't give you any this bread. You're in the wrong dispensation. She said, I'm just a dog. Feed me. He just stepped out of this and goes around You ain't going to put my God in your little theological discourse. You get him in your little matchbox and he'll break out, honey. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 66 said, Thus says the Lord, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things which mine hand made, and all those things which have been, said the Lord. But to this man, and I've got those words underlined right there, but to this man. I don't give a flip about that other man, I want to be this man. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Those words just jumped out at me, he that trembleth at my word. A man who's got sense enough to fear what God says. Yeah. I just want to say this. I went through the Bible. I had never preached it even. I, but for days I went through the Bible and looked at the word nakedness. Now if there's anything I'm completely, completely yeah. settled on yeah. is that God yeah. hates a naked person yeah. running around something. Ain't no word to park. He just said, that's it. God don't like it. Amen. I looked out in my church service the other day, and two ladies sitting there and had their blouses unbuttoned. Yeah. 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 Mister, I think he's a dirty old man. Well, I think you're a dirty old girl. Yeah. Yeah. You're putting your bitches yeah. up, ain't you? Yeah. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. We're home tonight, amen. Yeah. Yeah. You said, I thought we'd come to a mission conference. You better get straightened up before you leave. But to this man, this man, God said, I will look to him. He said, he that killeth an ox is as he slew a man. God said, oh, here's this religious crowd. They, they killed an ox just like they killed a man. In other words, they were making a sacrifice to God, but it didn't make a bit of difference. They got loose about this thing. And he that sacrificed a lamb just like he cut off a dog's neck. Just like he killed it all. Worshiping God. I mean, just trifling with God. I'll name just a little pint here, if that's what you want to call it. Black man said, nine's my pint. He said here, the recklessness in the ministration of God's business. I'm going to tell you something. There's some recklessness in the business of God. You get reckless, as Brother Green said a while ago, you can get your children in a car, and uh, you can get some preacher, 
And I want to throw him the brakes and put him out of my car. Amen. Going down the highway one day, two of my boys there, and, I'm, and, and this, this goofball was up right along, been a preacher 20 years, and started talking about Brother Roll. I said, hey, man, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute! Yeah. I'll be talking about Brother Roll in front of my boy. Yeah. I told him, man, he's holding up the moon. Some nut gets up in the pulpit and said, Well, I don't care what Rye said. How about Brother John R. Rye? Yeah. You said he's wrong about some things. Oh, uh, you'll wake up one time, you're about to have hair tick too. You hear this word everywhere, Ruckman. How about Brother Peter Ruckman? How about Dr. Ruckman? Huh? How about that? Ain't nothing wrong with that. You said he don't know anything. I never heard him say he was smart. Amen. He had Brother Danny Farley down a while back and myself, and he taught on finances, and, and uh, they had the greatest uh, illustration right there behind them, that the church was, had a financial problem. Had us get up there, and Brother Farley brought a message, and everybody got mad. Said, I, I don't believe anybody ought to get up and preach. Look, look, you dummy. You ain't even got sense enough to, to, to balance a $250 a week checkbook and you want God to send you to church for a $5,000 a week offering, and you're going to balance that. Yeah. Brother Danny Farley, some 10 years ago, took this boy in the room and said, Now sit down and listen to me. How much money did you owe then? $13,000. He owe everybody met. And some of them he never had met. He borrowed off this <laughs> I asked him now, how much you owe? He said, Nothing. I said, It worked. Yeah. Yeah. Financial and morals is what's killing the church. Yeah. Preacher joins the church, comes into church, buys everything under God's green heaven. Yeah. Somebody asked me today, said, How is y'all's church doing financial? I said, Great. Yeah. I said, It's doing great. Yeah. You don't know how great it's doing? I just, I just took track. I said, Brrr. I told my wife, Give me the last three months. I don't know exactly every dollar coming to this church. She said it's $75,000 for three months. I want to know how much come in. How you want to know? Because I asked Danny how I'm doing. You said, you mean you use his mind? Yeah, I ain't got no none. Huh? <laughs> but you know what you think? John, uh, Dr. Bob Jones Sr. told me, he said, I said, Doc, I, I don't have any sense at all about finance. He said, that's no problem. But I said, I don't know how to build a building. He said, that ain't no problem. He said, the problem will come when you try to do it. Hire somebody else. He said, theologians are dying of dust. Rinchy one. I go not I'm in. I go sit down my bank or ask my banker. If you can take Brother Green, got forty years of ministry, brother son. He said, hundred years of ministry. Said, sit down, young preacher. A young man, this is where you gotta do it. He said. Walked out. I said, you know what that them three old folks you told me. But the same nut goes down to the doctor. He's 29 years old. The doctor said, I, I'll tell you what, I've looked over, I believe your wife's got cancer. He comes back and he said, buddy, I tell you, I've got problems. He said, that's why he, my wife's got cancer. How do you know she got cancer? Well, that man told me, he said, you know, he's one, he's one of the greatest doctors in our area. When a hundred years of experience speaks, and you walk out them doors and get in your car and said, I tell you what, I don't need any more. I don't believe, I just don't yeah. believe those convictions are necessary. Yeah. Yeah. We'll let you preach next. Yeah. There's a recklessness in the ministry. We're reckless with a smile. I, I, never, I never used this word. I never used this word when I was lost. But a man sat down at my table, Brother Green, he sat down at my table and used the word that I never used in my life when I was unsaved. The dirtiest word a, a preacher used that word. And my wife started weeping, and so I said, well, should I hit him? I had my pistol on, reckon I ought to shoot him. Well, what should I do? What do you do with an idiot like this? This idiot is at your table, and he used the filthiest black guard word that ever come out of a sewer. In Houston, Texas, only the black people use it. We down in the ghetto use that word at my table. My wife said, my God, my husband was a dope fiend outlaw, and I never heard him use that word. 
Well, the preacher. He said, who was him? I can throw a rock to him right now. Oh. You've come a long way, baby. My wife went to the, went to the back room crying. I said, you fool. I, done put, I took my feet three times over my hand. Three times, darling. I had to constrain myself knocking this fool out of that, out of that chair sitting there. He said, I didn't mean anything. I was just telling you what that man accused my daughter of doing in the back room. We've come a long way from it. A man who said that in front of one of my daddy's boys, my daddy killed him when my daddy was lost. There's a recklessness. A mouth of reckless. Oh, you're grieved. I don't care. You get grieved, you get over it. Amen? There's a recklessness. There's a recklessness with our manners. Our mannerism. Our morals. We're reckless with them. I'm going to tell you something. That, there's, a, there's a belief today that you, you, can, you can perish the thought. People just believe today if they're in the ministry, they just commit adultery and be back in the ministry. I'm going to tell you what M.R.D. Hahn said. Believed and taught for 35, 40 years. And I believe the old man was dead. Yeah. He said, Preacher, if God entrusts you with a church, and you commit adultery in that church, you are through. Yeah. And I believe exactly what M.R.D. Hahn said. Yeah. I proved him wrong three times, Brother Green. Three times I proved him wrong. And, and, I, and I, I say to myself, he was wrong. And within a year, he was right again. Yeah. Three times. Three times that happened. And who's getting quiet on me? What have you been doing? Committing adultery? I mean, save me. Save me. I said, you're through. God puts an office in that church. And he makes that man a pastor. And he violates it. And God is through with it. He said, I don't believe that. Well, I'll tell you what Jerry Fowler said. Jerry Falwell said to Mr. James Robinson, James, give me a verse of Scripture in the New Testament for that. He said, God forgave David. He said, James, give me a verse of Scripture in the New Testament. And he said, well, Jimmy repented. The Louisiana kid repented. He didn't repent. That snake got caught. He's a snake. And, 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 and I'm really glad it happened. Yeah. Because I've been preaching 25 years. It's right. all snakes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad God revealed what I said was the truth. Yeah. Makes me feel like a prophet tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They're wrong. Yeah. I've been preaching that for years. That's a record. I'm going to. <laughs> this Bible said, let everything be done decent in order. God's man should be reckless. You're in God's business. This is the most important. People just get I'm going to mission field. Three months later, I'm coming back. Oh, get out. Go get drunk somewhere. Live like the devil. I, I'd just soon be in and find you just a quit. I know men get wounded and get hired. Come home and get ready and go back. Do what God wants you to do. But I'm talking about these people. Three months later, I quit. You ain't never got started yet. Man told me the other day, he said, I've tried to build a church there and nobody helped me. I said, let me preach you a sermon, son. Yeah. It's about three minutes long. I heard Earl Hughes preach it. It took him three minutes to preach it. <laughs> he said, them people down there in that city where he was going didn't send for him. Yeah. So when he got in it, they didn't help him. Yeah. And you're going to have the same thing happen to you. Uh -huh. yeah. You get that message? Three-point message. Took him three minutes to preach. And the world didn't call you. The world didn't send for you. Why don't you go down and do what God told you to do? Or why don't you just come home and get up and say, Bless God, I failed. And everybody get out and cry with you and sling snot with you and hang around the church a couple of years and go back. Amen? Ain't nothing wrong with that. The best quit blaming it on everybody else. Right. Said, Lord, it was me. I yeah. tell you, I was a smart aleck. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I want to start all over again. Yeah. Man, I've, I've had a great time starting all over. A lot of times. Yeah. Amen. Sure. A lot of 
of people doing God's business in the flesh. That's reckless. I've got to be a success. You don't have to be nothing but God's man. You said, Brother, well, if I go out as a missionary, what should I do the first year? Probably nothing. Probably nothing be the most wonderful thing ever happened to you. Some dumb bell wrote one of these missionaries a letter and said, Thank God. He's going to some country that couldn't speak a word of their language. He said, Thank God, next week for the first time, there'll be a church meeting in that country. You dummy. I can't even speak the language. His pastor didn't even want a church was. Reckless. There's recklessness in the ministry of God. I believe the Lord wants me to go under word for the world mission board. There ain't no such thing as going under word for the world. You ain't going nowhere under word for the world. You're going out of Shea Acres Baptist Church, if you're a member of my church, you ain't going under word for the world. Word for the world is going to receive your money and pray for you and help you and send you money. If you do anything wrong, they're going to call me and I'm coming over and talk to you about it. You know what I'm saying? Brother Homer here and a bunch of preachers here got together. And you want to call it a board? That ain't what it is. I don't want it is. Maybe it's a clearing house. Maybe it's someplace to gather the money together. But I want to tell you something. If Don Green sends a, a man down here to go out of this board, and that man does something wrong, Don Green is contacted. And it's in his Parker Memorial problem. Ain't no problem with this board. Everybody going around and saying, I mean, you know you should. You live like the devil. I mean, you telling Brother Homer's fault, Brother Jack's fault. We didn't help you do it. All Brother Homer's going to do is send you a letter and say, we ain't going to handle your finances no more. You said the board kicked me out. No, they didn't kick you nowhere. They didn't even aim at you. <laughs> they just ain't handling your money no more. Is that simple? And if, and if you got some little sorry, weak sister for a preacher, they're going to call him. And he said, well, y'all better come on down here. And we'll find another board for we'll send you out. God bless your little heart. And yeah, don't, don't say nothing. Maybe leave me alone. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I mean, if you've done something wrong, get down here and get right with God. But you know what most people do when they get right with God, Brother Green? When they get right with God, they say, well, I'll tell you. I've done so and so, but Mike, you know what Mike did? Yeah. And, 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 and I was wrong, but you know what Bill did? You know what he did? You know what he did? Hey, no! What? You don't ever have a God? You come down here and say, God, there wasn't nobody but me! Yeah. Up yeah. And up. Yeah. 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 I don't get right with God. Yeah. Amen. I'm mad. Yeah. I, I said, bless God, I'm mad tonight. I thought some people. Maybe done wrong. But bless God, I want to tell you something. You wicked snake, you, when you take some little old missionary aside and you sit them down and you poison their mind of just their own family, you is wicked. You is wicked as hell. Amen. Then you cry about six crocodiles here. Anybody care about all that? All I care about, you come out and get right with God, and you walk out that door right. When you're right, it's always the same. When you're right, it's always the same. I see it. I said, David got right. I see him, Lord. It was me, Lord. Lord, it wasn't Bathsheba. Uh, Lord, it wasn't, it wasn't Joab. It's me. You're reckless. Reckless. The administration of God's business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doing God's business in the flesh. Aaron's two boys, they did that, didn't they? They said, let's, let's put it on a fire. They stretched it all out there, but God wouldn't show up. They said, well, God don't need to show up. No, how I got my message. Get my clipboard out. I'll show you how to do it. I don't need God to come here. I don't need to fast and pray. I don't need to cry. That's for the Old Testament. That's another dispensation. I'll show you how to do it. This dispensation, here's how you do it. <laughs> so they got them a match. They struck that fire that altar, and God killed them both. And I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of strange fire being burned today. Trying, trying to show the world God's there. But boy, I say it takes a lot of matches. It takes a lot of striking. It takes a lot of burning. That old flesh. And, and, ain't, and God ain't showed up till yet. Amen. I mean, David, 
He's going to build a house. He said, I, I'd like to build God a house. I'd like to build God a house. Nathan said, yeah, man, go ahead and build it. Nathan went home and God said, no, we can't build it. Nathan had sense of that. God said, uh-uh. I've always wondered why God said in the Bible, the house that David built. You're wondering about that? Maybe God just paid him for wanting to do it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it! But he got the material to it. Recklessness in administration of God's business. Then selfishness in the choice of the place to serve God. Look at verse 3. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb if he cut off his hand. As if he had offered a swine's blood. He that burneth incense. Yea, bless the idol. Yea, they have chosen their own way. And their soul delighteth in their abomination. Did you ever see a generation delight in their abomination? I've never seen that like this in my life. My wife looked across the table at me the other morning. And that old sick woman said to me, she said, Preacher, where, where is the old-time missionary? Where is that? She said, Brother Jack, do you see some growing up to take the place? And I said, yes, I see some. Well, she said, you travel more than I do. She said, my God, a missionary came in our church. And she said, Can, would you mind if I hooked on to the electricity? I said, yeah. He would hook on to electricity. He come in, turn on air conditioning. Cost twenty dollars all day to run a big ten ton of He turned on it. My wife walked in my office, and he's sitting up there, brother Green, and he had his feet up on the side, and he's sitting on my desk. Cost six hundred dollars. Somebody gave him. He had his feet popping. My wife said, "Son, take your feet down off that desk." Now that woman was just a little bit funny. But she just mad. She said, "Get your feet off that desk, son. Get out of that preacher." He said, I was just using the cell phone. She said, son, get out there. Yeah. He said, a woman don't have any that. That's her husband. Uh, yeah. He gave you permission to go in my office and pop your feet up yeah. on my desk. I just said, you're reckless. I said, you're reckless. Right. And I said, God don't like you. Right. For no other reason, just be respectful. Yeah. Just, be, just, just have some respect. Right. Amen. You sound like that. I know it, but you live in them abominations. We take great pleasure in that which God hates. Did you, Brother Green preached my wife, and I, I, I felt it kind of freeze up. But you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, I, I got to thinking about it. Look at all of the people that go home Saturday night and get home Saturday night, and they got to get back to Sunday for work, for Monday for work. And they can't go home except on Sunday. You see, that's why God said that's the Lord's day. That ain't your day. Right. And so they go home, and they get up there in that church, they up there where their mama lives. It's day. So we, we, we can't go there because, you know, it's day. Well, you're dead. Why don't you go and join the dead? <laughs> and then about 1 or 2 o'clock, they leave up there, and they don't make it back in time for church. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, Brother Wood, we intended to come. And I watched one of the best families this shady has ever had. Get out! One of the best families of our church. Got to this and grandma. Just a little bit. I want to see the children. I want to see the children. I was talking about a while ago. The children need to see you being faithful to the church. Yeah. I said, those things that God hates us. The, 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 you know, in the place that we desire. Yeah, I, I'll serve the Lord. You, you've made your choice, haven't you? They're selfish in the choice of serving God. In verse 3, we choose our own place. They've chosen their own way. Their soul delighteth in their abomination. We, place, we choose the place we want to serve. We, we even choose the position we want to serve. Yeah. I believe God wants me to be a pastor. Well, who gave you that? You know, it's the strange thing about George W. Truett. He don't never say he was even called to be a pastor. One of the deacons stood up after he preached for about 10 years in all of the churches around the country, and uh, he said, we got to take care of some business here in this old church. This has been back for the turn of the century. And George W. Truett was out there in Texas in a little town called Whitehall, and he, he stood up and he said, uh, uh, George here has been called to preach, and we, I make a motion we're licensing him. He said, and, and George W. Truett spoke up and said, just a minute, he
said, I said God called this man preacher. I, I make a motion to rise. So I said, Well, cool. he sat down. Sat down. That's when he had God rebuke him. He said, Here's my Lord. Hmm? And George W. Cush said, They put me in the ministry. <laughs> there was another man who said that over in the Bible. You, you read that, didn't you? Paul said, He put me in the ministry. Mm-hmm. Amos said, I just got took. But I was out there gathering them sick of put and the Lord took me. Paul said he put me. There's a difference between being put and took. <laughs> Nowadays we decide what we're going to say and do. Man said me the other day, said I work with these Indians, so I'm sick and tired of them. Do you know any little church? Little good church? I said, yes. Yeah. Well, I knew one. You talk about a bunch of snakes. And I recommend it. And it's <laughs> good way to get him off the mission field, save the church all the money. Hmm? And brother, they go like him. And they go eat him. You said you're wicked. They don't love God. They don't even know God. And he don't either, so let them all go to God. <laughs> you said, brother, look, that's awful. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> I've been patting myself on the back. And I'm no three or four more preachers I'm going to recommend it one of them. <laughs> so I'm going to get them off the mission here. Yeah. And I'm no three or four preachers I'd recommend somebody to warn <laughs> Verse 3, now, they said they delight to do the abomination. We take great pleasure in doing things that God hates. We're highly pleased with that which God has refused. You ever think about the things that you're doing in your life that God's done told you? I'm not going to have it. I, I'm not going to have it. And you just go right on through the ritual anyway, and God said, I'm not going to have it. We're praising God for that which He does not have nothing to do with. I'm going to preach tonight. I want you to look at it in verse 4. I also accuse their delusion. And I've never in my life seen people with so many delusions. They don't know where they're at. I go to every church in here. I've been in some of you preachers' churches everywhere. And the first thing people say, Brother Wood, I'm looking for the will of God. I know it. I know the will of God for everybody right in here. There ain't no four times in the Bible they even mention that. And it's the will of God you get saved. And then after you are saved, it's the will of God that you be sanctified whole. In other words, God does a little progressive work in your heart and life. That's God's will. But Brother Green mentioned some things there, and you say, I don't believe that. That really doesn't make a difference, does it? It's too easy. What you got ain't working. And one guy said to me here a while back, he said, I have been pastor of nine churches in the last 12 years. I said, don't look like it's working. He said, God called me to be a pastor. I must be confused. God must be confused. What we do, we decide what we want to do and then it takes us two years to build a scaffold and it's not that up. I've been preaching for years and given the invitation for people to get out of the ministry. Kay's work work say that to me. Raise your hand, Kay. Kay's daddy came down. I, I won this girl's daddy and he was saved in 1957. I'm not a member of my church now. I was there the night she was born so you know I'm getting old. She was a missionary. And so I said, he come down, he surrendered to preach. He surrendered to be a missionary. And after a few years, he came to me and he said, God hadn't called me to do nothing. Brother Lawrence, you remember. Brother Lawrence, he went down and worked with Brother Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Here's his wife's face. I said, you knew God wanted to be a missionary. And you know, there's a lot of preachers. Brother Green, do you have any preachers in your church? If, if, if I told a man in my church, I said, 
It was a cold December day. And he said, what would be the greatest thing in my ministry? I said, do, do you have your uh, preaching uh, uh, ordination with you? He said, I can't turn my Bible. I said, throw it in that furnace back there. <laughs> and I opened the little thing for him. And he said, Brother John, God called me. And I've been to BBC and got me an education. <laughs> and he never preached a lick and ain't got a lick of preaching in him. I'm preaching about God and God calls him and he puts a little preaching in him. <laughs> If you ain't got no preaching, there, you ain't no preaching. Ain't no preacher? How are you going to be a preacher without no preaching? Huh? How are you going to preach without any preaching? I'll tell you, a lot of men in the church, they roam around and roam around and go from church to church trying to break up that little call. And the greatest thing you can do, you're not going to do it, preaching. One man said to me down in Mexico a while back, he said, and he was mad. He was angry. And his pastor said, what's he mad about? I said, he's mad at that one-eyed Mexican. He said, what's he what, mad at that little one-eyed Mexican for? I said, because that little one-eyed Mexican is running through hundreds and hundreds of schools. And that guy there graduated from Peter Ruckman's school, and he ain't got nobody. And ain't nobody wants to hear him preach. And furthermore, he can't preach. And furthermore, he ain't no preacher. But every time you see him, he's starting the church. But God don't never show up. And the people don't show up. And his wife was sick, they wouldn't show up. <laughs> and he was mad because that little preacher had some preaching. And when he get up and preach, he preached the Mexican fire. And little Reuben sees those people get saved. He's working up. He's about 23 years old. And I believe he's on his third church. He's built and turned it over to the house. Third church. You said, I don't believe that. I know it didn't, you dummy. But you're 25 years old. Before your mama, your mama bought your drawers and your socks and everything, you got to you 25 years old. But that little messy when he's tired, he's standing on the street corner or trying to sell us, trying to get gum. And he grew up to be a man when he's a young boy. Amen. And you ain't never grew up yet. Right. You know, come around to the church and say, if the church is what happened. I mean, I mean, we started the old church downtown 30-something years ago. Ain't nobody give us nothing but hell by the acre. <laughs> Lied on us. Done everything they could do. We unloaded trucks. We worked. We got everything. Try to make a living. Mm -hmm. Wish I could get to them other points. I don't think we're going to make it. They delighted in their abomination. And then the Bible said here in verse 4, they had delusion. And they'll bring their fears upon him. So when I called none did answer what I say, they didn't fear. But they did evil in mine eyes, and they chose that which I delight not. They're doing a bunch of things. God said, I don't even like it. Have you ever asked God what you're doing, if he liked it or not? Do you ask your wife occasionally, honey, do you like this? How about asking God Sunday morning, Lord, do you? Lord, do you like what I'm fixing to do? Lord, I just uh, surrendered to do so and so. Lord, what are you thinking about? You, you'll get this after a while. We think we're some kind of favor from God. I'm going to tell you something. Brother Green, now you write this down. Brother Green, this, this, this will help some of your preaching. Brother Green, in the university of Houston the other day, the head professor out there said that there was only one culture in the world left today where the man is the head of the family as a nation. And he said that's an Hispanic culture. And he said we're working seriously on it to destroy that, but the only culture left in the world is an Hispanic culture. I'm going to say something. You ain't going to like it. You ain't going to like it at all. You ain't going to like it. But there's more people than say today in the Spanish world, there's 400 million Spanish speaking people, and there's more people being saved today in the Spanish culture than anywhere else. Why? That's right. Because the man is ahead of the No problem. No problem. 
That professor said the other day, and Brother Dan met her sitting right in the class. And Brother Dan come home and reported what was in the classroom. And he said, well, we're working on that. A man comes in our church, and he makes a profession of faith. And a man, Brother Danny Farley, was preaching here not too long ago, a year or so ago, and a big policeman come walking down the aisle. That was named Hill. And one of made on the police, I mean Texas criminals, put them in jail. He's a toughie. Got a big six gun on him. He's a Texan big cat. And he said, Brother Farley, we're coming today, me and my family, to join this church. And his wife said, right back there in the back. Brother Farley said, tell your wife, I'm sorry. I'd have walked back there and said, <laughs> And I'd have saved my family, as I said. Him and that woman is divorced from her. She wouldn't come. She didn't come, did she, Dan? What she do that? She, she went back there and said, I'll get her. Honey, would you please come? Instead of getting her, she said, Woman, you know what I said? <laughs> Isn't that something to you that a big 240 pound man can walk around with a gun on? And I mean, run right in a place, the guy got three submachine guns. Bam, bam, bam. They shoot it out. And he gets home and she weighs 90 pounds. And she's got him by the nose. And, <laughs> and you don't figure that out? I never have figured that out. I'm telling you, I know, man, you, you are having a dream. And you know what that little girl's doing tonight? She's sitting out there in the country crying, wondering where her husband went. He wasn't a man, is her husband. Said he's going to send you a strong delusion. I wonder what that is. You know, a delusion is a child father. I looked, I looked that thing up in the dictionary, and it said a child and father. And some people sit around and say, you know, I always did want to go to Germany. I believe I'll go and be a missionary. Well, God bless you. You'll be back. <laughs> it's this. A delusion is a dream without any foundation. Yeah. A delusion. Oh, I'm, I'm going to heaven when I die. Well, how about having a little heaven right here? Yeah. How about living a little heaven right now? Uh -huh. You said, I don't want no heaven now. I want all I can get yeah. out of this world. Yeah. And then, when I die, I want all that other world. Yeah. I'm sorry. You might believe it, but I don't believe it. That you can live in two worlds. I believe you've got to make up your mind in this life and get saved. And I believe you saved you from something, to something, and for something. You get that tonight. It's a delusion. A delusion to me is to believe that you can get by with something when God said no. That's a delusion. Brother Willie Crosby asked me, they asked me a question. Brother Willie and I, we haven't been friends a long time. We've known each other a long time. <laughs> he came to my house here a while back and he said, I, I was uh, in a meeting, Brother Green was there with us, and he said, uh, Brother Willie, I, I just came here. I want to stay in your home and I, I don't want to cost you any extra money. I said, I, I played the first class hypocrite. I, I said, Willie, I wouldn't dream of you staying in my home. I've rented you the best motel room in the second. And you just go down and get your food all free. Amen. Yeah, I've known him since. Forty years, you know. And that's a while. And I want to make sure he got plenty of rest. And I did too. Really, the reason I put him in there, he wouldn't let me talk. He does all talk. I mean, all right. All right. I said it's a delusion. I said it's a delusion. Would you look at verse 5, please? Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. You and I are experiencing an embarrassment before a godly world for the way people live. I went in a barber shop here a good while back, and the man was cutting my hair. And I, I said, sir, are you a Christian? And he was a Mexican fellow. And he said, no. He said, I, I've been cutting here. And he said, uh, I'm a Mason. And he had a Masonic thing up there. And I said, well, I don't know anything about that. I, he said, well, why aren't you a Mason? I said, well, Masons don't like people like me. And I told him all about my past. And I said, the only body would have me was Christ. And I said, the Mason are looking for some good people. And I said, Christ is looking for some bad people. 
The Masons had never found any yet, but Christ has found a lot of bad. Amen. So we're in battle. And he said to me, he said, one of your men in your church owes me for a drill that he bought off of me. I said, not one of my men. He said, yeah, one of the men's member of your church. I said, what's his name? He told me. I said, he's not a member of my church. I said, we church him eight years ago for two years. He said, you did what? I said, you know, you're like you Masons. You trick or die, don't you, if you don't do right? I said, I say that because that's what we do. I said, we put him out a long time ago. I had two of my ladies one time got kicked out of a bar. So Wednesday night, I put them out of church. Some lady come to me and said, I just don't believe in that. I said, well, do you believe in a bar kicking them out? I said, they kicked them out last night. I thought we could put them out tonight. I got more convictions than the bar. Yeah. At least. Yeah. But we're being embarrassed. Amen. We're being embarrassed before a godless world. Now, Jimmy Swagger don't embarrass me. Well, he's exactly what I thought he was. Yeah. Now, Tammy and Jimmy didn't embarrass me a bit in the world. They're exactly what I thought. Now, but if, if Brother Jones would do something, that would embarrass me. Because I know he's God's man. I, I wouldn't, Brother John, if I differed with you on a conviction, and you had something, and it, I just wouldn't differ with you, Brother John, because if anybody believes anything in this day and time, I'm going to holler who race hard. If you ever get to believe in Brother John, if you're not to wear them boots anymore, you're to wear snowshoes, I'm going to buy me a pair of snowshoes and go with you. Because most people don't believe nothing. I'm going to just go, go with you. You said you're a compromiser. No, I ain't. I'm going to encourage him to watch no shoes. <laughs> so the church is embarrassed because we are not able, we're not able to influence this world. Very few churches in America have any influence in the community where they live. They're embarrassed at their powerless lives. The world looks at us. They're ashamed of the ungodliness that prevails in our land. And we can't get one prayer. Amen. Don't, don't come up here and tell me about, about the abortion crowd and what the modernists don't believe. Let's talk about us. Now, we're unable to reach the world. And the Bible says, Hear the word of the Lord. You that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name, they said, let the Lord be glorified, that he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. They that tremble at his word. I want to say just a few words, and I'm going to close about they that tremble at his word. In Acts 2, you know, when Peter preached, a, a little young man said to my church the other day, he said, uh, him and his dad come by, and out of courtesy to a good man, I let the kid speak a few minutes. I shouldn't have, but I did. And he got up and he said, I'd like to share something. I, I hate that word. God knows I hate that. Don't share nothing with me. I mean, tell me, preach to me, do anything, but don't, God, up that word, share. And I read, I read an old Jew preacher in, in 1932, and he said, God didn't call you to share the gospel, he called you to preach the gospel in 1932. And I said, bless God, he hated as bad as I did in 32. I wish he'd take it out of the dictionary. I'm glad the, the Lord didn't say, I want to share something with you. Know, Oh, I like that word. I hate that word. I hate that word. But in Acts 2, Peter shared the gospel with him. And the Bible said they were cut to their heart. Yes, they were cut to their heart. Brother Wood, Sunday morning, when I got through preaching, some folks got saved. And, and Sunday night, when this young kid, he got through talking, and, and Brother Dean was so upset. And a, a lost man and his wife walked out of service, and they went down there to a little place, probably get them a bottle of beer, right close to the church. And they probably went down there. Nice people come to KDS. And uh, so he, Dean, he went down and followed them and brought them back. And, 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 and I got me a little piece of paper here. And I said, I, I better, old oh, Brother Dean brought them people. And I, I better get me something. And while this monkey was sharing with them, I wrote down in Luke 16 what he didn't know when he went to hell. What he found out when he got there. What he remembered after he'd been there a while. And what he could not have after he got there. I got, and I got him preach 15 minutes on don't go to hell. Boy, so boy, he's just sitting there. That guy done shared with him about 15. But he's sitting there looking about going to hell. Take 
takes four years of college and three years of seminary to teach you how to shag. <laughs> That's honest truth. Well, I tell you what you can learn. You can learn about ten minutes how to preach on hell. Yeah. Who are those that tremble at the word? Of the word? Those that have faith in this word. We've lost faith in this book right here. We've lost faith in this book right here. Those that fear his word, that's what it says right there, they that tremble. If God calls you to be a missionary, I'll scare you to death. God calls you to be a preacher, I'll scare you to death. God puts you in the work of God, I ought to just scare you to death. It's enough to make it. You know, I'm not really worried so much about the people that I saw saved through the year. And this has been the most fruitful year of Shady Acre Baptist Church. This has been it. This has been it. I've never seen nothing like it. This has been it. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm worried about the other 10 or 12 years and the people as a preacher me not having God's divine guidance and the lambs that lay slain back down the line. That's what bothered me. I looked back and I saw a family the other day. I talked to them just a few minutes and I remember when I married them. I saw them saved and I thought how they got out of God's house and how they got away and how rude and ugly I was. And I tell you, I really took counsel. I'm not worried about the sheep that I saw saved. I'm worried about the lamb that I hurt along the way. Those that fear his word. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not his word. I mean, those that some, those who want them, Brother Don, them old time, holy ghost convictions. There's some things that it's burned. Did you ever notice when you go in a barber shop, and you ladies agree with me or disagree if you want to? Did you ever notice when you go in a barber shop? They said, uh, <coughs> you want me to leave this pool here and here and there. That's what he's doing here. They're always trying to get you to leave your house full, full, full. Now, did you ever go to a place and they say, boy, I'd just like to get a hold of your hair. <laughs> I'd just like to cut it all off. Ladies, is that right or is that wrong? Do you ladies agree with me or disagree? You agree with me? But when a lady goes to a barber shop, they just, when she's got beautiful hair like this lady's got, they just want to get a hold of her and cut it all off. <laughs> so when you go there, they want you to grow your house. What's the matter with these people? They mixed up. They're all mixed up. Because you see, I'm sorry, ladies, but a wicked woman don't want nothing to do with the glory of God. Yeah. And a man is God's glory, and she wants to see it discarded. Yeah. And a woman's hair is her glory, and he won't see it all. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like that. Small time conviction. Yeah. You said, we're in a new age. I want some old time holy. I, I don't believe. I, Brother Green is talking. I'm going home. I really am. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. Get home, son, and tell my wife. Don't, don't throw the newspaper here on the side. I, I don't read the newspaper anymore. I'm going home. I, I made up my mind. I just, you said Brother Green didn't preach on it. I know it, but, but that's what God spoke about. There ain't going to be no funny paper coming to my house on Sunday no more. I don't know about living nothing in my house. I don't want nobody coming by my house throwing no paper in my yard. I, I just don't want nobody coming by my house. You say, I don't believe it. I don't care. You get you three funny papers. You get the Houston Post, the Houston Chronicle, and I'll throw you one. <laughs> <laughs> you read my church paper, it's not like funny paper sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. I made up my mind. I've been preaching some things down here. A man's wife came in there, and, and uh, she didn't have one of her shorts. They were just I went out to the camp. Uh, there's 144 children there. There's all teenagers, grown young ladies. One church in Texas owns about 3,000. They have a Spanish department. Man, he used to have a real Bible conviction. And he said, I want y'all to know here at this church from this day forward, there'll be no conviction, no issue anymore with the pantheist. And so we'll do away with it. Always preach against it. 
30 years, man, been preaching. So they done away with it. And so he sent out a little post there. That's our camp. We bought the land, baby. We built the building right now. Nobody donated no money to it. We did it ourselves. If that's my ground, I can do what I want to, man. So we sent out a notice, please, all you girls, come with dresses on. They come with riches on. They come with Baptist riches on. That's one that showed up in the middle. They had them Baptist riches on. And, um, and uh, they, they came in there, and, uh, and one girl, she had her leg like this. She was about 18. And them Baptist riches, they fall down like this. And she said, they're naked. I mean, honey, her hand is just so nice. I'm just telling you, I mean, and they said, they said, well, Brother Wood, and I told Brother Danny, and I told him, we have a camp next week, and nobody is going to walk on these grounds that ain't got a step down. You hear me? You ain't coming out here with a pack two lock, whatever that is. Now that can mean anything. And so they cut them riches off, and this girl finally got him up to about here. She looked like she didn't like him. And her husband said, now, brother, what's going to like him? She said, I won't get out of the car. So they went from there and told him to visit him. And I, I didn't know why I never had visited him before. And I drove up there in that old black 85 Lincoln and got out. And they wasn't home. And just as I started to go get in my car, they drove in. And she said, I ain't getting out. She said, give me the keys. I'm going around here to the grocery store. She said, you can't go to the grocery store because you can't get out around there. She said, you're going to get out of the car right here in front of Brother Wood. She got out and went in front of the house. And then the house finally said, well, I said, I'm going to go in the house. I went in and I asked all of them and I called them and I said, what is the will of the church? And the church is in front. And we're just going to do anything. I do nothing. Can you think I'm mean enough? To see them people down there in the days, everything got away? They said, it's so different about this. They don't do that. You can't do that. And uh, so we called them in there. And so they said, okay, you can't work this. He said, I don't believe like you do. That doesn't make any difference. Ain't some independent about this. And we do what we please. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're independent. He said, well, down in our church, we do what we do. Help yourself. But I like that. A man come to me by then. He said, you're a leader. I said, for what? He said, because you believe that things are wrong. I said, that doesn't make any difference. What do you do? He said, I believe it's right. I said, help yourself. Why? Why are you not? You don't need to quiet enough on me. And, you know, I, I don't care. But I said, but I can't. Since it's our home. Since that's our food. Since that's our home town, we go there and kill it, and we're going to finish it, and we're doing it free of charge, we're going to dress like we say. Amen. Amen. So since they couldn't come back to church, they said, well, we will go over to Brother Ford Bible. We'll go over there. We'll try to hang over there, and you can dress like you want to. And so they said, how do y'all vote? So they voted, and they said, for $65, we'll go over there. And some guys said, well, I don't like this. So they called another place, and they cost $90. And so they said, well, that's where we're going. They let us do exactly what we wanted. So they went to the tent. It cost a hundred bucks. They come here free. But Brother Wood believes in Kulak. I don't believe nothing about Kulak. I believe in dressing. Does anybody in here believe it's wrong to wear a dress? See? I believe it is for me. I don't know this. Brother Hummel, this is scripture. And I don't care what you do. I mean, you can send your wife to the go so much. You can even come back down to church after some guy likes what he's looking at and steals and runs off with it. You can come back and I'll cry with you. Though you're stupid, I'll cry with you. But for me and mine, and mine's made up. And you're going to send me. But I ain't even going to try to send you. I don't care what you do. I've done made up my mind as a bunch of Baptists going to do exactly what they want to. If it destroys the church and kills the choir of God in us, they're going to do what they please. So help your son. But for me and mine, we're going to serve the Lord. We say yes, we're going to do what God wants us to do. Got 
to my room Sunday morning. He said, Well, I like this church. I told him about 10 minutes. I said, Son, I said, Have you? I said, Take a right, right up on first church. First church you're running to right there. I said, Mangamoke Baptist Church is a good man there. He said,